What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Review for the Witch and the Beast. This is episode 10, and with me, as always, I have Blue Spade. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, uh, this picks up some time after the events of the last episode, uh, in which uh, Helga is going uh, going off with Asaf to, um, I guess, going to the uh, to the to the Order of Magical Resonance headquarters. Well, um, Asaf says they don't actually have any headquarters, but they have different. Uh, they they have these halls that I guess they connect to each other or something, and I guess that's where they're going to. But they don't particularly. Ha I guess they don't have a main headquarters. Yeah. So while while Hel Helga's going on with Asav, Guido's uh, left by herself. Uh, you know, you, you just just uh, I guess just just stand there and wait until they get back. But of course, uh, G yeah. Guido being what. So, so we should mention too that the reason why they left Guido behind apparently is because Guido. Um, uh, I I guess like before you enter this the secret area, um, you have to like agree to some kind of, uh, you have to agree basically I guess not to, uh, what was it like expose the secrets of the place or something like that. Uh, there was some agreement that uh that I guess Guido didn't agree to, so she can't enter. Uh, but Ashaf and um and Helga can go in. Yeah. So of course, uh, with Guido uh, being being left outside, of course, like being what she is, she can't help but over overhear what's you know what's going on about witches and stuff. So she she overhears uh, like a group of kids talking about uh, a witch in in town, and G Guido just like you know takes it upon herself just to go you know, or just de you know demand that kids take take her to this witch. Uh, unfortunately, you know, and it, it, it just ends up being just you know just a regular old woman who who makes medicines. Yeah, but of course, um, Guido uh, finds that there is a little bit more to it because when she tries when well, when she tries to approach the woman, she like her feet are, seem like they're like frozen in place, and she like trips she trips over and falls down, um, and then she just I guess can't move her body. Uh, which yeah. leads into this kind of ridiculous scene where, like, this cat and this cat just starts scratching up her face, and and the dog is like, I guess, biting her leg or something. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Th there's a reason as to wh why that happened is because yeah. uh, Asaf intentionally, um, you know, le left her in that weakened state because you know, just just so like you know, uh, she doesn't, uh, you know, she she doesn't get into some it, like for if if she if she were like one hundred percent, she would have killed this woman. If, yeah, you know, if she wanted to. Yeah, Ashraf um, is basically just trying to keep her under control. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it was a kind of a good thing that he sort of did, but there was kind of a drawback um, to what actually ha happens next, and that's of course when uh, an executioner who who used to work with the the pre the previous executioner from the last episode arrives at the cottage and apparently uses his cloak to take Guido, uh, the old woman, and the children to another dimension. And at the same yeah. time, while in this dimension, that they're left um, physically incapacitated, like they can neither move nor nor speak or have any uh, senses once whatsoever. And then, of course, like the executioner, uh, you know. Of course, inquires uh, uh, to Guido, like what, what, what really happened, um, you know, it, during the events of the last episode. So I yeah. guess he, you know, in a way, he's trying to get revenge on on not only Guido but also a Asaf as well. Yeah, we find out that this executioner, I guess, has been following, like following them around since what happened during the Demon Sword arc, and because he said that he arrived in that city after everything had already happened. Yeah. And and but but of course before you can you know before you can get uh, get into it any further, uh, a witch just suddenly appears out of nowhere uh, within this dimension, um, and of course uh, Guido recognizes this witch uh, uh, is being the same witch that ended up cursing her in the first place. Yeah, and this is the point where it gets past where I've read in the manga, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I will say it is adapting the story faithfully. It's just that it's doing it, as I've said before, uh, it's doing it in a way that's just very, um, th there's no, like, real, 
emotion or intensity to the way that things are portrayed in the in the anime as opposed to how it is in the manga. The the thing with the manga is that it has like in my opinion some of the best art I've seen in a manga and like I've mentioned the anime doesn't really have any of that to fall back on. Uh so any complaints people might have had about the story in the manga it feels like they can probably overlook it more because the manga has such incredible art, but that's not really the case for the anime because the anime doesn't really have that. Um, so, you know, we, I, I guess people just tend to notice more flaws within the plot. Um, but the way the scene is directed, I mean, it's just, again, it's just very flat. Um, because the, the way this happens in the manga, when they reveal the, uh, the witch's face, it's just this like dramatic reveal of her face. Um, and here it's just kind of like a simple sort of panning shot where it pans up to her face. And that's kind of how they handle like a lot of these scenes, you know, it, it, where, whereas there would be like a, a really like intense, like, you know, reveal in the manga or something like that. Uh, the scene instead just kind of pans around to another character and it's, it's just done in a very boring way. I mean, I, just imagine if Jujutsu Kaisen or some other series like that was directed the way the series was and you'll kind of understand what I mean. Uh, you know, whereas that series has just, I mean, it, of course it has like a higher animation budget and all that, but yeah. it's also just directed very differently. Um, and I feel like this, a lot of this just has to do again with the series director or the director of the series, probably just being, not being familiar with this kind of series, um, having just come from directing slice of life anime. Yeah. Um, there, there's another issue I have with, um, uh, with this whole thing with, uh, you know, with G- Guido uh, fi- finally uh, meet- meeting Angela, you know, the witch that ended up cursing her. It's just yeah. all the other instances in which in which Guido has confronted another witch is accusing them as being the ones that ended up cursing her. So, like, it, and not, it, it only takes up until, like, this scene in particular that she knows that this is the exact witch that ended up cursing her in the first place. Yeah, I mean, apparently Ashaf knows that because we we get that from him when he's talking to Helga, um, because he I, I I forget like he he, uh, he I guess he feels that something's wrong with Guido, um, like while this is happening, so he rushes back to where she is, um, because he he reveals to uh, Helga that that I guess that was that that was the witch that originally had cursed Guido. Yeah, and of course also revealing that. Uh, that this particular witch uh, can live longer than than the normal witch lifespan, which is apparently they said two hundred years or something. Yeah, I guess uh, he's trying to say that she's. I guess she might be immortal or something. Yeah, it's it's just like like I was saying. It's just like my my issue with the whole thing is just like what why. Uh, you know, of course, I I can understand why Gito and Asaf were looking out around for witches. But why is it until like, you know, until like this person shows up that Guido actually recognizes this is the same witch that ended up cursing her when she was like basically just roaming around dif- different places, accusing other witches of being the one that cursed her when they really weren't. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, she doesn't I, I guess she doesn't really. I, I, I mean, again, the, the problem is we don't really know. You know, we don't really get that information yet. We don't know how much Guido knows about the witch who originally cursed her. I guess, I guess she just doesn't know what she looks like. Um, or I, I don't know if she I don't know if it was revealed that she knows her name. Maybe she doesn't know what her name is. So she doesn't know, like, I guess who exactly she's looking for. Um, and then, you know, we find out in this episode that this is the witch that had originally cursed her. Yeah. Um, so. So, yeah, so so a- Angela ends up killing the executioner uh, that ended up kip- kidnapping uh, Guido, and of course, they, you know, Angela and Guido get into a conversation uh, about about their supposed time together, and and of course, uh, G- Guido does whatever she can just to gain the upper hand, but uh, unfortunately, due due to the due to the injuries and you know, and and, the, and her weakened state that uh, that. Asaf left her in. She's not. She's not unable to get you know get the upper hand on her. So she's bit you know and, and of course she she also tries to to kiss Angela to I guess to regain her um, her true form. But unfortunately, uh, Angela stops her from uh, doing so. And then of course uh, Angela gets. She uh, also removes that like collar around her neck. Yeah, um, which re- I'm revealing. not really sure if they ever revealed exactly what the collar does. Um, I assume it's something to maybe restrain her to an extent. 
uh, or like to maybe restrain her power. Um, because we see later on, like it, um, and I mean, maybe she could have done this before, but you know, Gudo just like punches, uh, uh, Ashaf and does some pretty, so a lot of damage to him. And I'm wondering if it's like, because maybe she had the collar removed and now she's just able to, you maybe unleash more of her strength or something. It, but. It, it's, it's not clear, but yeah. yeah, but by, by, by the end of it, and Angela, of course, uh, decides to offer, um, I, I offer to leave clues for Guido to find her. And, and of course that's, that's when Asaf uh, and Helga arrive and find Guido and, you know, like just pretty much beaten up after, uh, after what happened. And so yeah. uh, a, a, after that, back at their apartment, uh, Guido's obviously furious when uh, she finds out that, um, that Asaf was the one who intentionally left her in a weakened state. So she, she nearly kill, kills him or just like, just pun- punches him in the abdomen, and he, you know, he, he ends up coughing blood. So um, he, 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 of course, apologizes uh, for doing so. But I think, you know, he was kind of somewhat justified for doing so because, like, um, Guido would have killed that old woman like uh, earlier in the episode had had he not done so. Um, but yeah, like he, he, like again, like he apologizes and he promises to, you know, to make it up to her by you know, by helping her um, find Angela and hopefully reversing that curse that she has yeah uh, well and also he says something like about how it reminds him of, of when they first met so I guess maybe in the next episode they're going to go into a flashback or something um, which kind of annoys me to be honest that this is happening now um, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that we needed to see that in the beginning of the series, but it would have kind of helped just to see um, or just to know, like, you know, just to give us some basic information or some answers as to, uh, you know, at least like some aspects of their characters. Because there's a lot that we really don't know about, uh, like how Gudo was cursed originally and, you know, you know, certain information about like why she's or, you know, the witch she's looking for and all that. So. I mean, I'm guessing the flashback will clear some of that up, at least. Yeah. And uh, another thing I forgot to mention is that Angela mentions that that uh, like she she's the one who gave what was it gave gave um, Guido that form in the first place. I think it's ba- based off of her appearance, I guess. Yeah, something something about like I, I let you use that body or something like that. Um so yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if it's not, it might be like a body that she created to uh, and and put like Yudo's consciousness in there or something, um, because we know that's not her original form, so uh, it's possible that's what happened. But you know, mm-hmm. it's just not too clear. Yeah, uh, I mean, overall, it, it I don't know. This episode was kind of okay. I mean, it's uh, it's I think the only plus side is them revealing. Uh, you know the origin which Angela but the I I still have a problem with the uh, you know with the with how how that was hand, handled overall with I, I don't know it's just it's just it still doesn't didn't make sense with you know all the other times with uh with Asaf and Guido lo- locating all the other witches and it's not until like you know until this witch in particular is like that you know Guido actually recognizes her Instead of all the other witches, is that you know they they ended up fighting or facing. Yeah, yeah, I I'm not exactly sure on that, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought this episode was yeah, I would agree it was okay. I th- I thought of course the best part was the reveal of Angela, and I thought that was really well done in the manga, and it was not done so well here. But I mean, in terms of the story, it, things are a little bit more interesting now because we see the witch that supposedly originally cursed Guido. Um, and then and it sounds like after this episode, they're maybe going to get into uh, Ashaf and Guido's uh, backstory, um, at least to some extent, uh, which, yeah. you know, it, it just feels like it's it's weird that they're getting into it and uh, around like episode 10. Um, I, I kind of wish that at least like, I'm not saying that we need to have their entire backstory, but it would help to maybe get some flashbacks here and there to just see like, how they originally met or whatever, because like the this, this series doesn't really give you any of that. Um, at least I guess not until this point. Um, yeah. 
But I, I'm I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm just curious in where where they're gonna take the series. Um, even after you know this the show is done by probably by next week. I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I I'm not exactly sure. Like, cause I mean, up until this point, a lot of the story has been like these very short individual like story arcs. Um, so I'm wondering if they're going to get into like a more like more of the an overarching story where they're trying to hunt down Angela. Uh, or something uh, you know I would kind of like that like I, I don't mind uh, shows that have just more like self-contained story arcs in certain episodes and this we get you know we just get some development with like the main characters and it kind of seems like the witch and the beast is is kind of taking that approach but I'd also like for it to I, I guess eventually maybe go into like a like a, a bigger like just more overarching plot instead of just more you know self-contained individual stories mm-hmm. um I think that can be done well, but I feel like the way the Witch and the Beast does it, it's not, it's just not great, uh, in my opinion. Um, I feel like I guess it could have been done a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I don't really have too much else to say about this episode in particular, though. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to say about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's just, I, I just feel like the show has been mediocre at best. I mean, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> assuming, yeah. Assuming until like I, I start reading the manga myself, it just. I it's I I I don't know I I don't know how 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 I'll feel by the time you know the last two episodes roll around and assuming if it is kind of be maybe an origin story for both Asaf and Guido and how they en- ended up first meeting each other is um I I don't know where 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 they'll take the story from here nor will I even know or well well. Nor will we even know uh, when, whether or not that they'll ever consider continuing the show. Yeah, I, I don't. I would be surprised if they did, because um, it really seems like they, they didn't really put much effort into this season in particular. So I mean, I would be really surprised if they did another season. Uh, I hate to say. I mean, and I'm not sure how if the manga is even really like far enough along to where they could do another season, uh, because a lot of the material they've they've covered up to now like i think this goes into technically i'm, I'm not sure exactly which chapter but i know it th- this is stuff going into volume five and there's at least stateside there's 10 there's i think over 10 volumes that have come out so far uh so i guess yeah. you, you could potentially do another season if you had the same the same amount of episodes possibly um but yeah i'm not sure if they will do another one though um I mean, and I mean, especially if this is the same level, if we're getting the same level of quality and the same director and everything with another season, I, I hate to say it, but I'm not sure if I really is really worth watching it. This this is just one of those series I feel like it's just better. You're better off reading the manga for it because, you know, while the manga does kind of more or less have the same plot, I feel like it just has an overall better presentation, like just because the art is so much better. Uh, whereas the anime, of course, like I mentioned, does, doesn't really have that. Um, because, yeah. you know, it's it's Yokohama Animation Lab and the director for it is is a slice of life director. He's not used to directing like a like, you know, Witch and the Beast is supposed to be more like a dark fantasy series. And yeah, you know. if, if, they, if they are to make a second season, they I don't know. They, I think they need to change up, you know, not only a different anime studio, but they need to change up to a different director. Yeah, at least get a different director, because, I mean, uh, I, I haven't seen anything else Yokohama Animation Lab has done, so I don't want to say it's just the studio. It could be the fault of the director or the production staff or whoever. It, it might not necessarily be the studio. But, I mean, yeah, at least get a different director that has some experience in this genre. Because, like, I mean, the first red flag was just the director being somebody who's never directed a series like this before. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I think that's that's definitely hurt the overall quality of the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that all being said, guys, uh, until next week, we will see you all next time.